So good morning, everyone, and welcome back to day two of the Patient Safety Awareness Week that Signia Healthcare is uh, uh, conducting free awareness program. Yesterday, we talked about certain aspects of patient safety, prevention of fall, prevention of HAPU, surgical safety. Uh, so that recording will be uh, put on our YouTube by this weekend. All these recordings will be available on the YouTube in case you want to see again or uh, more people want to see. They are not, uh, you know, not possible for them to be here. So a very, very warm welcome to all of you. I have a, a fantastic one hour. Today we are really going to wrap everything up by 12 o'clock. So in pursuit of patient safety, is uh, Signia Healthcare's endeavor to improve patient safety. And uh, I totally believe that when uh, nurses work towards patient safety, it is also in the interest of their own safety. My name is Tankam Gomez. I'm a founder CEO of Signia Healthcare, and I'm a nurse by profession. And I have spent 40 years as a nurse had been at the best side and moved all the way to be group nursing head of Fortis. Then I stepped out in 2012 and had been in education and training, learned a lot many things since I left Fortis. I'm a certified high fidelity simulationist. I have done my green six sigma. Such, uh, I'm sharing this story only to let you all know all the young nurses Please remember that what we learn in nursing, is just about 10% of what we actually need when we look after very different types of patients. So learning has to be a continuous journey as long as you want to be a nurse. So today also I am learning even to make this today's presentation all about masks and respirators. I, I definitely had to read up understand what I am going to share with you, right? So uh, why did I, you know, bring up this all about mask and respirators? I mean, this is not the mask that we use for patients, but these are the masks that we use for our own safety. And it's very important that we know that what, what is used for when and why, and what are some of the safety precautions that we need to take care. It's very important that you learn to be a safe nurse yourself and then practice, you know, safety when you're looking after your patients. Uh, may I request everyone to keep your microphone muted and also stay off the video and questions can be put in your chat box and I hope that I'll get a few minutes to answer your question in case we have any. I have a hard stop at 12 because I have another session at 12 o'clock so I need to Definitely wrap it up by 12. So friends, this is what we are doing for three days. And today, yesterday I was there. To, today I am here. Tomorrow, uh, Ms. Ishita Chanda, Chanda, who is a senior trainer with us, she will be talking about basic lab investigations. We totally believe that if your basics are strong, then you can build any number of stories on top of basics are not right, we are going to collapse, then there is a problem, right? And that's what our endeavor is all about. So you can catch us on our YouTube channel. All the recordings will be recorded by this weekend. So together, we are going to ensure patient safety. So let's start today. What are we going to discuss? So we are going to quickly review the droplet and air one transmission. What are they? And then what is respiratory protection for healthcare personnel and uh, identify the appropriate respiratory protection for droplet and airborne and to discuss about wearing and use of respiratory protection. So we have taken most of the guidelines from CDC and some other international websites so that, you know, uh, we are uh, learning what is right and what is evidence-based and current. So uh, quickly, let's review the modes of transmission. Basically, the more major ones are contact, droplet, and airborne. Now, we know that contact means direct or indirect. That's transfer of 
organisms inhaling droplets means the size of the infectious agent is more than 5 micron in size and usually it is hung in the air and airborne pathogens are the ones which are smaller than 5 microns and they can just be floating away in the air. So can you think of some diseases which come under this and if you can quickly recollect some diseases that you have already learned it's good do your you know review in your mind and that and see that well if you have got these some of these names these are the common ones that the contact clostridium difficile and mdros all these full forms the you know short forms everything should be known by nurses and nursing students right i'm sure that you have learned of all this and in the, the droplets are then the mums the influenzas the pertussis the pneumonic plague the very famous and uh, rubella the german measles now uh, covid 19 will fit into which one of this can i have some answers in the chat box sars covid SARS-CoV-2 or SARS-CoV-19, which one of it, it will fall into contact droplets or airborne? What is the current agreement? I'm not talking about what we were confused in 2020, what we are looking at today. Can I have some answers in the chat box? Hello, friends. Not sure? Okay, thank you, Pasana. She gave the answer droplet. Great. So, airborne, uh, there was confusion. We know the COVID is airborne or droplet. Now, there is a consensus that it is more of droplet, and then contact is not there. That initial phobia of not touching anything. Yes, anything that comes near our face after our hands have become dirty, then obviously we are going to give it to ourselves and give it to others you know that is a different that the the transmission is through droplet now coming to airborne very famous tb rubiola not rubella rubiola chicken pox and uh, you know many other new uh, organisms may crop up and very important for our health healthcare workers to remember aerosol generating medical procedures they are considered to be under airborne so this is very important and these are not new information because uh, covid came this all have been there so we are going to quickly go through the history of the different pandemics you know that played havoc on this earth so the earliest that we remember is the plague the bubonic plague which is caused by yersinia so today's date i don't think that many of us will uh, remember that you know whether this happened because most of you most of us were not around i don't think any of us were around fifth century contributed to the fall of rome rome and it came back in 14th and 20th century there are three different versions bubonic septicemic and pneumonic now you can see that in this plague also when it hits the lungs the uh, the mortality rate increases so the pneumonic version was spreading through coughing, sneezing, spitting, breathing. So it was droplet. And this is a picture I found on the net about quarantining people who were part of the bubonic plague in India. So this is a famous picture, you know, where, you know, 75 million people had died because during that plague. You know. Let's quickly go through uh, then plague and then came the smallpox. Smallpox is eradicated now in december 1979 and uh, till then it was you know there and there have been you know uh, 20th century 300 to 500 million deaths and one of the reasons for the blindness highest reason and the picture is not very happy picture at all but it is really bad and now what we are struggling is, of course, it's not a pandemic or anything. We do have the chicken pox or the younger brother of smallpox. So here it is airborne and contact and chicken pox also is the same. So trying to just share with you the stories which have been around anthrax. 
Now, uh, anthrax is also, these are all called bioterrorism agent. That means you can actually uh, use it as a bio weapon and create havoc in any country or across the world if you want, you know. So uh, I was reading up about anthrax. Anthrax is, you know, on and off it is there even in India. And the last I could read was that there were four people who died after consuming infected cattle meat. So anthrax actually comes from the bovine, you know, so that is how it is. And it can go through inhalation and ingestion. So the decontamination is the basic need there. So now comes the influenza pandemics. I'm sure that, you know, because of uh, uh, COVID, many of you must have already read about different types of influenza the spanish flu etc uh, who uh, actually wiped out millions millions so 1918 the flu pandemic killed 12 million indians and uh, this was the you know spanish flu time this was what the uh, public information was how familiar it is to our covid 19 you know so um, these are not things which are uh, which have not been there now in recent years you must have heard about these are the H1N1, uh, Nipah, you know, many different, you know, uh, virus that that can actually catch your lung. And uh, the once it enters the lung, the uh, the mortality actually goes up. So first in the first severe deadly transmissible disease that emerged in 21st century, 2009, SARS. And uh, it, uh, but the numbers were kind of. Can I ask everyone to mute yourself, please? To hear me, you don't have to be unmuted. So please mute yourself. So if you look at the numbers, you know that the, the global death was 774. And I know I was working in hospital at that time, and uh, you know, there was a lot of fear among people. And but then uh, before uh, it actually uh, sustained, you know, it actually went away also. And we know about the H1N1 influenza, where uh, in 2009 this was declared a pandemic, and then uh, then uh, slowly now now also you hear about H1N1 here and there. And we know that you can see in the picture, you know, that uh, from uh, 2009 cases and deaths till 2015, that means every year it kind of comes back and numbers are varying. And so that means it is not completely eradicated, but yes, it is around and uh, we have learned how to manage them. And worldwide, some 18,000 deaths have been reported. The transmission is droplet contact where there is droplet when it settles on things, then further it can be studies have shown airborne to be more significant part of transmission of 2009 H1N, H1N1 influenza than for seasonal flu. So there is an airborne fear also. So we have to take necessary precaution. Now, this is just a slide to show you that, you know, um, different types of uh, acute respiratory syndrome had come up, you know, uh, that is uh, COV was in 2002, 2012, it was called the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and COVID-19 came in 2019 and uh, we had been fighting it from 2019, we are in 2022 and the WHO is kind of considering whether they should put an end to the definition of pandemic and as we speak today, today I got a information that in china again the numbers have gone up and um, uh, one of the cities have been put under complete lockdown so let us you know cross our fingers and pray for safety we have went through very tough times and uh, we have had uh, 57 percentage of deaths share when it was at the peak and uh, you can see, but there is something that I would like all of you to carry is that uh, this is what I would like to, because when I was speaking in an international conference, I did talk about this, the quantum. When you look at the, uh, you know, per 100K population, per lakh population, how many deaths? So if you can look here, the mortality in India is much less. 
Australia probably has the least. So uh, we do have, we have a very high population and then uh, our deaths have not been uh, particularly, you know, that high. Now, very important, I would like all of you to pay attention to this. This is very important to remember that all these procedures are done in hospitals and uh, all of us are around helping uh, making sure that we prepare the patient and we are assisting in the patient, you're around. So bronchoscopy, sputum induction, endotracheal intubation and extubation, open suctioning of airways, not the closed suctions, CPR, autopsy surgery involving use of high-speed devices. These are called the silent threat of the surgical smoke. So uh, here also we have to be very, very careful that our airway is protected. So we will be discussing about uh, how we are going to protect ourselves. Now, tuberculosis is another disease that had been around now for ages. And, and unfortunately, TB is still a bigger killer than COVID in India. COVID came all of a sudden and then uh, that became the topmost news, but without... Um, uh, without being aware or we, we don't talk about TB anymore because that definitely India has the largest number of TB patients in the world and we contribute to the largest number and our deaths due to TB is far higher than COVID. So I'm sure that many of you are aware because of the pandemic, the acuteness of what has happened, uh, many of the chronic diseases have taken a beating also in our country. So transmission precaution for uh, open TB is airborne. So now we are going to get into the content of today, that respiratory pre precaution in healthcare. So uh, these uh, slides have been taken from CDC. So let's start with cloth mask. I really hope that all of you will pay attention to what we are discussing today. Not only uh, learn yourself, but also teach your family, friends, and public wherever that you have possibility. So please remember that cloth masks can be made from variety of fabrics. Many types of cloth masks are available. Now, what should you be using? The proper fit over nose and mouth and chin to prevent leaks. So don't go for a lot of you know fashion things. And if you are, if it is not covering then it is not good and multiple layers of tight woven breathable fabric it is not just one sheet of you know cloth and expected to have a nose wire so that you can have a good fitting fabric that blocks light when held up to bright light source so now that's one way of checking hold your mask against the bright light and if the light is coming through it's not the right mask that you should be wearing so do not wear cloth mask with gaps around the sides of the face and nose because you can inhale through that. And cloth mask should not be with exhalation es es valves or windows or any other opening. I mean, they are all marketing you know, tactics, so don't fall for that. And any single layer fabric and those made with thin fabric that does not block light is not right. And if your mask is wet or dirty, Obviously, it is not good for. So what you need to take away from here is that if you have a cloth mask, hold it against the light and see if it allows the lights to come. Now coming to procedure mask. So we know that we call it a surgical mask, procedure mask, and multiple layers, three layers, five layers, five layers, you know, all that. So they are called as surgical mask or medical procedural mask. So uh, this, this also should fit very well in your nose and on, also on the side. So whenever you wear mask, if you think the air is going inside, so many times people don't do the first step is, you know, that making the bridge, you know, when you take the mask. So when you wear a mask, you fit your bridge first and pull your chin piece down so that, you know, you're able to cover your nose uh, the mouth and also you are preventing any air from going inside. So otherwise it is just wearing mask. Now it's very important that how do you find your best fit because it is not made for us, right? 
so uh, ways to have better fit so i have seen a lot of people wearing two mask you know wearing two mask disposable mask underneath and cloth mask on top so there are two mask and that is okay but cloth mask should be worn on top and the uh, disposable mask can be worn underneath combine either cloth mask or dis disposable mask with the fitter or brace any one of them should have a brace this is very very important to remember that if this part is not fitting well then it is not helping you okay now how can you make it uh, you know fit for you I, I have seen a lot of people already doing it you know that you can do a knot here near the ear put a note and then bring it back you know the in hospital they do prefer tying up rather than the ear loops so for normal use outside you can use the ear loops so that is not a problem and uh, so uh, there are some cbc videos available if you have a so you can do this you know looping here you can do the loop here and then bring it behind your you know ears and make sure that your nose is you know held that nose bridge is already shaped up and then it is covering your chin so please remember to educate your family and friends now n95 is now very common in 2009 it was so expensive it was very difficult to give n95 to all the staff and when we started the covid also we know that we had problem now we get enough and more n95 uh, mask now how do you put the n95 mask now all the public also keeps using n95 mask sometimes i see very dirty n95 mask which when i ask them they have been wearing for you know long long time it does not help you know after certain time once it has done its work it is no more of use now how do you put your n95 mask first of course is hand hygiene even before your normal mask also you should have your hand hygiene and inspect the n95 mask for damage so you should look inside and outside of the mask and if it looks damaged dirty or damp do not use it i have been using n95 disposable mask at home though i don't go to hospital but i know i cannot use that anymore because there is some smell that comes you know i do air it outside i don't go for full day anywhere wearing that mask so but when i come back after a few hours after a few days i can feel that the smell in the mask is changing so that time i change my mask so this is something that you should remember so then how do you put on the n95 mask so now uh, hold your n95 mask in your hand it's like a cup you know with the nose piece at your fingertips the nose piece you are holding at the fingertips it's almost like you are putting a cover to your face so hold it and if if the nose piece is not there then you should know where is the nose piece in hospital i am sure all the masks that come will have a nose piece here so hold it and then place it over your nose and the chin so you have put it together now it's very important pay attention to this picture how do you pull off the things so when you are holding this with the other hand take the top loop bring it to the back you know bring it back like that and then the lower one you take it afterwards the top one and then you take the lower one it gives you a better fist and then uh, do not crisscross the strap so they are lying flat at your back and then after that very important that you place your fingertips to make sure that your nose piece is fitting very well or it is fitting to your nose size if you don't do that though there is a nose piece you are not making use of it so the air can go inside from the side so do that and uh, post that this one should form a complete seal of your face and then you check for gaps you check for gaps so hold it or gently place your hand like that and breathe out so when i breathe out now if the 
air is moving out from the side of my mask that means it is not sealed well so i need to make sure that i am you know getting a tight seal so especially when you are working please make sure that you are you are wearing the right size you know mask and in the right way so it is very important otherwise you know just it's almost like i wash that you know you are worn a mask but you are not safe so make sure that you do the uh, the leak check i mean the what you are doing here is you actually hold it and blow out so when you do that if the air is going out from the side that means you have to check the fit or maybe you have to remove the mask so make sure that you are doing that so when you are removing the n95 mask now one of the things that uh, very important to make sure is that when you are removing the mask you are not touching the outside of your mask and the best way to remove a mask is that bend a little bit forward over your you know biomedical waste and then you remove you remove this the tie and if you are holding the tie you remove the tie the top one first and then the bottom and make sure that you are just dropping it into that many times when we take a demonstration of how to remove the mask the outside which is the contaminated surface will be touching your uniform so you don't want to do that right and the n95 mask should not be put in oven should not be put in microwave to sterilize it it is not cdc is not recommending that replace the n95 when the straps are you know loose or stretched and it is no longer fitting you or it becomes dirty or damaged throw it in the trash and this is what is the recommendation you can reuse it as long as it is clean it is doing its work so please remember that now there are some uh, i thought this is an interesting information that all of you can have it that people who are you know having disabilities they are deaf they cannot hear young children students learning to read so that means you know you have to see their face so their clear mask or cloth masks with clear plastic panel are alternate type of mask that may be helpful in interacting because deaf uh, people who can't hear they are actually you know trying to uh, do lip reading so all these things cannot be done if your mask is you know um, uh, not transparent so they are clearing these masks fda cleared the marketing of transparent medical mask this is in us i have not seen such mask in india so i have not seen any advertisement also but it's good to know that for special situations alternative masks are made available now face mask in healthcare now in the hospital so far whatever we discussed is more about general use and you know uh, for the public now when you are in hospital all healthcare uh, people have to take care of their health so these are worn by healthcare personnel to protect them from contact with infectious splashes and sprays so this is the purpose of wearing the face mask or worn by healthcare personnel to protect patients from exposure to infectious agents carried in the healthcare worker's mouth or nose so we are trying to protect ourselves we are trying to protect the patient and these are also worn by patients in the hospital to limit the potential dissemination of infectious respiratory secretions from patient to others so that's why we give mask to patients so in a hospital setting healthcare workers are wearing to protect themselves to protect the patient and patients would be wearing this so that they are not uh, infecting other patients or other healthcare workers now we are all aware about the uh, you know personal protective equipment we are not talking about the entire pp here the most of the thing that we are talking is around mask now in the hospital many masks that we get you know they are kind of loose and disposable and they can be dif different you know designs and the breathability fluid protection large particle droplet protection everything can change so surgical mask is not n95 there is a difference between the two so we'll be talking about different masks so they can be 
labeled as surgical laser isolation dental medical procedure mask so in our hospitals the most common ones are surgical mask and then n95 and some hospitals has used uh, uh, some other versions of you know respirators so we will be talking about that too so can utilize ties ear loops or over the head bands as fasteners okay so this is how all the mask they may come with with or without face shield i remember that many years ago when uh, somebody was trying to market mask with the face shield and we were considering buying that and i think it was in 2009 when the uh, sars came through so but we had a major problem the when we were wearing the mask with the face shield it was causing a lot of you know vapors because it may be because the mask itself was throwing the air out so it was becoming you know foggy so then it was not you know but today i am sure the designs have got better and all are used to wearing goggles and face shields to protect themselves so covid 19 this time what it did is that it kind of re-emphasized lot of things around hand hygiene and ppe which was you know there even before as i told you infection always existed in our hospitals and airborne and droplet infections are there in the hospital but only thing we were little casual casual now that we talked about the mask now we come to the respirators respirators are designed for higher filtration efficiency and better facial fit so respirators of course they can do better filtration and they give you better facial fit so properly fitted respirator they will provide better protection against airborne transmission of infectious particles than face mask so that is why when you have a condition of airborne uh, disease it's very important that you are wearing one of these respirators you know we talked about the mask so mask is you know good it will give some certain protection but respirators they give you far better protection so we'll be discussing more around that so let's look at uh, these uh, we are going to discuss each one of them in a while so respirators please understand they prevent the inhalation of infectious airborne particles which are less than 5 micron we did talk about airborne the airborne uh, the microorganism is more than 5 micron so these uh, respirators will protect you from droplet as well as airborne infection prevent outward escape of user generated aerosol so when you wear that it prevents inhalation and it also prevents your any of your exhaled air to be going out so that also prevents out outward so both way it is protecting and also prevents users from touching nose and mouth with contaminated hands because their design is in such a manner you are not able to touch them so easily so that is that is what is respirator so let's look at this one reusable fabric mask is low level of protection it's not a medical device so um, you should know that you can use it outside but if you are going to a very crowded place if you are using a fabric mask it is not going to help so when my sister was going to some kind of a fet in the school or something so i was telling her you know she is used to all this different design matching with the dress you know the mask so i usually tell them you know you should wear at least a surgical mask below the face mask you know to protect themselves medical mask they limit the exposure of and by wearer to large droplets splashes and sprays large you know droplets that is more than 5 micron loose fit not intended for respiratory protection so if you want to have a respiratory protection surgical mask is not going to help for regular thing it's okay used by surgeons and healthcare workers in surgical settings okay so even in medical settings you know when we are doing some procedures you know we we are using mask now compared to that respirator is supposed to give a very tight facial fit 
and it protects the air from going in and going out. So general uh, respirators are N95, FFPs. Anybody has seen FFP? This is not fresh frozen, frozen plasma. Anyone uh, knows the full form of FFP? Have you used, have you seen? Okay, so we'll be discussing about that. Then there are general respirators. Then you have medical respirators used by surgeons and healthcare workers. So there are so many varieties of masks. So wherever you are working, please make sure that you understand what mask is available in your hospital and that is used for what. Now you understand the difference between mask and the respirators. So now again, we come to once again, the respirators, you know, so as we see the design, N95 is probably the most basic respirator that you can have. Then there is something called elastomeric respirator. They have all these gadgets around and then powered air purifying respirator, that is PAPR. Uh, I do know that one of the doctors in Mumbai, they said they are using this when it was the peak of COVID. 19 during intubations and code blue i think they were trying to do that but it is pretty cumbersome when you are trying to use them now let's look at the um, the comparison okay so n95 reduces the exposure to small particles it filters out at least 95 percentage of the airborne particles tight fitting allows minimal leakage tight fitting yet allows minimal leakage you can see here in 95 the number 95 denotes that 95 percentage of the particles are filtered and when it comes to ffp2 this is a face piece filtering face piece ffp is filtering face piece so there is uh, you know ffp one two three the higher the number higher the efficient that's what you can see FFP2 is about 94 percentage and then you have uh, N99. Any of you have seen N99 in your hospitals? Anyone? I have not heard anyone talking about this. So there is N99. So that can remove 99 percentage of filtration efficiency. N100 is 99.97. So, you know, the as the number goes up, their efficiency levels are going up. So, FFP3 is almost 99%. So, just knowing the numbers gives you an idea that which is going to be better efficient in its work. Surgical mask is fluid resistant, protects the wearer from against large droplets. So, when you are expecting splash, etc., the mask will give you a protection on the area that you are wearing mask. But if you are expecting a flash it is always advisable either to use a face shield or the goggles this is very important does not protect again protect against smaller airborne particles loose fitting and always there will be leakage when you are wearing this mask it is very difficult to get full fitting so you need to know in which condition that you are going to use what okay so respirators most commonly used in healthcare are as we discussed, the most common one is N95. They are all of different design. So whatever that you use, you have to make sure that there is no leak, okay? Powered air purifier respirator, and that is the ones that look like, you know, like an astronaut and with this big, large mouthpiece and there will be a motor that you are carrying. So you are, you are getting fresh air circulated inside. So that uh, probably... It is good to know that there is something called that and maybe uh, I don't know of any Indian hospital where they have used this during the COVID time. So now uh, the other thing that you have to remember is that when you are wearing this, if you have a valve inside your uh, you know, respirator which is going to throw the air out, then you cannot use that when you are doing a sterile procedure so it's very important so i i see a lot of people with you know valve moving around you know they think that have having that is better but if that person has got 
even a mild flu. They'll be actually throwing a lot of stuff wherever that they are going. So they should, the N95 should be worn without a mask. So there are many different designs here and you are, anything with mask, uh, the uh, valve should not be the right procedure. So you have N95, FFP2s, filtering, face piece, as I told you. Advantage is all of these are the same uh, particulate respirators, you know, all these uh, uh, designs which are here. They are disposable, they are lightweight and relatively comfortable. That's the advantage. Disadvantage is the inhalation process may allow some contaminated air to leak into the face piece. You know, it, it may not give 100% seal. Respirator with isolation valves cannot be used when working in a sterile field or if the wearer has a respiratory infection. So if you have good cold and you're going to hospital, you should not be wearing any mask with the exhalation valve. So that is definitely a no, no, no. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now power air, puri air purifying respirator. Advantages, they are far more durable, protective, relatively comfortable, not as comfortable as your particulate respirator. Minimal breathing resistance, no fit testing required because this is already designed in such a manner. You have a lot of space because you are putting a hood kind of a thing on top of it. So you can relatively breathe better. Now disadvantages is quite bulky. So it is restricted mobility. You will not be able to communicate <coughs> interference with patient care activities. You can imagine you're wearing something like this and you are planning to care for a patient. It will be very difficult. And disinfection required after every use because the other ones are disposable. So you don't necessarily have to disinfect them. And this could be noisy because you have that, you know, motor running. So it will be noisy. May lose filtering capacity if battery is low or out. So if the battery is not uh, pr properly working, the filtering capacity will be not there. So one need to be careful. So this is your PAPR. No, elastomeric half mask and full mask respirators. Now, I don't expect all of you to remember all these things is that, but it is good to know there are so many different types of, you know, mask available. This is almost a, a little bit like a CPAP mask. And then there are some federation things on the side, you know, it looks like uh, from some other age, you know, we are looking at people. So this is elastomeric half mask or full mask. So we have, no, the, for the CPAP also, half mask and full mask, so something like that. Durable, may be cleaned and reused by same or multiple users. Full mask offers better seal and provides eye protection. Here there is no eye protection. Here there is eye protection. Lack of healthcare personnel, disadvantage, you know, people don't have experience using this. It also needs routine inspection, maintenance, and disinfection so that, you know, it is appropriately used by people. Communication again will be difficult and should not be used in areas where sterile because there is a exhalation. In her, uh, es, the, es, the inhalation port, it filters the exhalation ports throughout the air. So you cannot be using that in the sterile field. So respirators uh, in high risk situations, you know, uh, example, TB patients undergoing bronchoscopy or autopsy higher level than N95 respiratory protection is may be required. So when you are uh, doing bronchoscopy for known uh, open TB patient or any other such airborne, you may consider to use. Now, all these things we are becoming aware now. Now, if we, if we look back at our practices that we were having in our hospitals, even I am reflecting on what we were doing. We were not too much worried about TB patients. We were actually wearing the regular mask. I was also wearing the regular mask. And we know that, you know, half the population of India is already, you know, either they are TB positive undergoing treatment. It has not become a big hawa like many other diseases so but it's very important to remember when you're actually getting exposed to aerosols in a known patient uh, a surgical mask and uh, even a n95 
is not enough. It's good to know that. I mean, if you have a higher level one, we should be able to use that, right? So identification of correct respiratory protection. Now, how do we identify which one we are going to look at, okay? So once again, uh, just to show you that uh, the the norms, you know, this is American uh, NIOSH. This is the company that gives the stamp that this is okay to use this. Okay, so there is one uh, chart here which says that single use face mask, they are writing filtration effectiveness. This is from China, three microns that more than 95 percentage of them can filtrate up to three microns. Okay and 0 0.1 micron it cannot do okay it cannot do at all so up to three micron it can filter now there is another number yy0469 this is also called surgical mask here they claim that three micron up to 95 percent efficiency 0 0.1 30 percentage up to 30 percentage of 0 0.1 micron organisms can be filtered out and in USA, in USA, ASTM F2100. So there are some numbers which are printed on, printed on the covers of this, you know, which usually we don't pay attention. So, but then it's important to know that, you know, USA, they are talking about level one, level two, level three, number one, two, three, and they are giving up to level three will give you three micron, 98% efficiency filtration and 0 0.198 percentage so this is important to know that which kind of mask is being bought and which kind of mask is being used in the hospital this is not for the public when it comes to europe they are saying that we have type 1 type 2 type 3 all of them have increased you know 3 micron filtration efficiency but no efficiency for 0 0.1 micron now, respirator mask, N95, 0 0.3, 95%, 0.3, N99. So, all of them are 0 .0, 0 0.3 micron. This is what it is talking about, okay? This is uh, 3 is equal to bacteria filtration efficiency standard. This is, you know, uh, BFE, 0 0.1 micron particle filtration efficiency standard, 0 0.3 so all these things are you know uh, there on the mask itself and i put a chart on this side just to talk about test particle size micron average n95 r95 whatever is the number the filtration particle filtration efficiency increases by 99 up to 95 to 99 point seven percentage all of the splash and oil resistance will vary but they are uh, they have some resistance, but then they are not 100% splash and oil resistance. So mask or respirator. When do you use a medical mask? When are you going to use a respirator? So N95 comes under respirator. Okay. So medical uh, mask by healthcare worker for providing routine care to any patient with a disease that may be transmitted through droplets so you can use a medical mask when it is droplet transmission and any patient who is uh, you know showing any respiratory symptom the patient can also wear the mask this medical mask or we call it as the surgical mask now coming to the particulate respirator including the n95 so you have to use it when you are entering the isolation room of our airborne disease airborne diseases are usually isolated in negative pressure isolation so when you are entering there or suspected of being infected with a novel or unknown organism causing acute respiratory disease for which the main mode of transmission is unknown and this is what happened when covid 19 started because it was new and we did not know so obviously everybody was wearing n95 and performing aerosol generating procedures associated with an increased risk of as respiratory pathogen transmission so for all Air, aerosol generating procedures the recommendation is used a particulate respirator that means you should be using n95 i that would mean that you know um, the infection control protocols which are written down in the hospital needs to be looked at 
Now, the lessons that we learned in SARS have been documented, but somebody is going to document the lessons that we learned for during COVID-19, but they are not going to be very different. So when we look at the history of COVID-19 from 2019 to now, we had seen insufficient supply of masks, especially in 95. We saw poor fit, people having beard, mushas, facial hair, you, you will not be able to fit your mask you know, correctly. Whatever is the reason, you are taking a risk, it is not going to fit properly. And inadequate fit testing and knowledge of proper mask use. This was a problem then, it is a problem even now also. How many of you actually when you wear a mask, you know, whether it is regular mask or N95, how many of you do a fit testing yourself? Can I see some hands going up? How many of you know to do a fit testing and how many of you actually do? If you ask me when I was a practicing nurse, I will not be able to say that I was doing that every time. Probably I will do it when I know this patient is infectious. Otherwise, when I'm wearing mask, I may not have done it in my earlier avatar. Selvarani has raised the hand saying, yes, I do. So that's very good. So we will also be, dis we already talked about leak test. How can you do a leak test? You know, you blow out and you will see the air going from the side. So inadequate fit testing and knowledge of proper mask use. High aerosol exposure during respiratory care procedures. This is something we learned during SARS and this is something we uh, reiterated during COVID-19. But whether COVID-19 is there or not, we are always at the risk of high aerosol uh, producing procedures. So we have to know how to take respiratory protection. Inadequate eye protection. So I used to joke and tell, you know, that in 2008, 9 and all, you know, we had to create the PP kit in the hospitals, right? So which included the goggles. So goggles always remain there only. Nobody will bring it out, you know. Even in the emergency, when your patients are coming in, you have absolutely no idea what this case is all about. You have got road traffic accidents, bleeding all over the place. I will hardly see anyone wearing goggles. I hope all those things have now changed at least the fear of COVID. The risk of exposure to splash and body fluids was always there. The risk of exposure to aerosol generating, you know, you know, matters, you know, the especially the air that could become contaminated, it always existed. But where were we taking serious note of all this thing and doing the right thing to protect ourselves? That's the most important question. Poor removal technique, self-contamination. So many times, you know, during the COVID. Uh, I used to discuss with the nursing heads, uh, you know, asking, you know, is it possible that our people are getting, you know, the COVID-19 one because they are not using the PPE properly and also during the time they are removing, maybe they are contaminating themselves because we all have bad habits, right? So we need to be very, very careful. There is no point in taking risk with, you know, uh, your job. Now, this is a picture from the Mayo Clinic post COVID, how people are working, you know. So, um, so there are some things which are being recommended from different hospitals. Now, uh, this is, uh, this is something that they have done. Uh, test was done in the lab with the dummies to see that what happens when you do uh, different ways of doing your fit test, you know. So they wore, they gave the mannequin cloth mask over medical mask, that is your surgical mask. Medical mask itself had knotted ear lobes and tucked in the sides. So they used all this on the mannequin. And uh, they also used a mask fitter, nylon covering over the mask. So these are, they during the study, they found that all this is possible. Now, uh, this is an interesting thing. I would like you people to pay attention to this, you know. Uh, if you look here, I will try to explain this. This is the photos of the test that they have done with the mannequin, you know. So in the lab, you know, how, which one is going to be better. So now from here only, you must have seen some, you know, posters which are coming out. Now, let me look, uh, show you this, okay. 
cumulative mass exposure microgram of particles you know this is what it is how much is the exposure so the uh, la longer the bar the story is bad i mean that's what you can understand so no mask or that means source and receiver that means you are with the patient and you are there or two people are there and uh, so one is the source one is the receiver so maybe a patient is you know tb positive and i am the nurse who's looking after or i am the nurse or the doctor intubating the patient or doing a bronchoscopy whatever it is when they both are not wearing mask this is what is going to happen yes this is no mask so this is the highest one source source no mask receiver is wearing mask that means patient is not wearing mask but the uh, the operator is wearing mask still there is only no nominal the reduction in the exposure because one person is wearing mask now, yourself then uh, this blue this blue one when you are doing an unnoted medical procedure mask unnoted means regular procedure so uh, when both are wearing mask whether you are using this particular procedure you are wearing a surgical mask directly like this okay so if both are wearing the 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 particulate exposure is coming down this much okay now the same thing when repeated when you are doing a double mask you are wearing a surgical mask and then you are wearing a cloth mask so you can see this one when both are wearing this is the reduction noted tucked medical procedure so when you are doing this kind of knotting and i really hope all of you will at least take this away as a learning from this class that you will always wear mask like that so yeah. if both are wearing your risk of exposure is reduced to the minimum so most important this blue line both source and receiver both are wearing mask that means patient is also wearing mask now if the um, rec the receiver is wearing mask the light blue one it is still higher if when it is noted when double mask is even better so that would mean that in case you have a higher risk what will i recommend i would recommend maybe you will wear two mask and wear them noted so that way you have a better protection so how to perform seal check we talked about the leak check earlier we said okay if you if you hold the mask and blow out if you see if you feel air is coming out that means there is leak now how do you wear how do you do a seal check when you are wearing n95 mask don the respirator ensure it is seat i mean you are seated properly and then inhale forcefully sit down inhale forcefully and you should feel the face piece should be partially collapsing because there is seal so you are actually drawing in the air from which is within the mask so it should so minimum this should be you should be able to do because there are uh, you know different type of fit check that is recommended and that needs machines and you know trained personnel so i am not talking about that so you can easily do a leak check and a seal check leak check where when you blow out you should not feel any air coming out that is your leak check seal check is when you wear your n95 fit it properly sit down hold the mask and breathe in and then if your mask is collapsing that means you have the right mask on your face so my request will be please do not be casual it is your health and your colleagues your loved ones your family so please do not be casual learn so obviously i really hope today's date at least this is not how doctors and nurses other people are walking around we know that absolutely this is a big no no nice looking nurse but very bad mask being worn so don't get caught in this images this is not correct so let's not do that so if i do a glow testing you know the glow one you put something on the uh, surface and you do shine the light you will be surprised when you do all these things this is what is going to happen
when you are putting it down all your uniform all your clothes are getting contaminated the mask itself is contaminated because it's already lying down there and then you are lifting it up and wearing it please this is not the risk that you would like to take and also don't put your patients at risk by having bad practices you know i really hope that you have taken some very basic you know pearls of wisdom to be safe yourself and to keep your patients also safe so it is 12 now we are just about time to wrap it up so what is next see you all tomorrow we are going to discuss basic lab investigations that will be done by miss ishita chanda tomorrow i will also be there so please don't forget to check out our youtube channel if you don't have the link don't worry just search for signia healthcare and you will be able to see that and we also have a facebook uh, in which we always upload all the events which are being planned and coming up all the trainings that we conduct so you can check out our facebook also we have a online portal www.signiahealthcareacademy.com you can go there create an account access free courses and there are few paid courses of interest to all of you there are some critical care topics some general topics and you can do completely online and when you get 80 percentage marks in any of those tests you can download your certificate from the website itself so thank you so much all of you for your patient listening and uh, please if you think that today you gained something by spending this 60 minutes with me uh, please you can give a thumbs up go to your reactions and give me a thumbs up i would like to see that in case you, you really ma'am. learned something yes thank you thank you everyone and uh, i'm going to stop recording so i will see you all tomorrow and um, yes um, thank you for all the thumbs up thank you very much